off. Welcome everybody to surviving and thriving in a bear market. Uh, now this webinar, for those of you not familiar with my voice, first off, my name is Thomas Wood. I'm a partner here at Basecamp Trading. Also run the Futures Trading Room during the US and London overlap in the morning between 8 a.m. and noon every day. Uh, and today's topic is very relevant uh, for the current market environment. I wanted to bring this up and do this webinar. It's gonna give you a ton of free information because it's something that can help help traders out there. That's why I wanted to go do this. Uh, I was going to do a workshop on it, but I decided not to do a paid workshop or anything, just do it for free uh, because we want to help people. So this is going to talk about, this is not, so today's webinar is not about going and making a killing primarily in trading a bear market. It's not about going and making, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire by the time this bear market's over. No, it's about hedging. It's about protection. It's about keeping the pain down, <laughs> okay, uh, primarily. We'll also talk about how you can make some money, but uh, primarily it's about um, minimizing losses. Before we dive in, though, we have to go through the risk disclaimer. Just keep in mind, trading and investing carries a high level of risk, as you all know, uh, and there's no guarantee of profit. Uh, there's always risk with prop or with trading, just like there's a chance to make money, there's also a chance to lose money. Uh, we always recommend pe to people, look, when you are trading, uh, you only want to trade with risk capital, meaning only trade with money that it's okay if you lose it. It's not set aside for something else. So don't go mortgage your house and then put all that money in a trading account and lose it all. All right. Um, and there's two full reasons for this. First off, if you do lose it and it's risk capital, then it's no big deal because it was just extra money. And then the second bigger reason, though, is that it helps with your trading because it takes an emotional takes the emotions out of it. it. It doesn't put that pressure on you of going, I have to be right. I can't mess up. I can't make a mistake. All right. So it makes it that much easier to stick to your rules, keep your emotions in check and follow a plan. Now, with that being said as well, uh, we're required to show you CFTC rule 4.41, just a hypothetical disclaimer saying past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Obviously, there's no guarantee. Uh, anything I teach you here or talk about here today is going to happen again in the future. That being said, um, we trade this way in the trading rooms. We've been doing this. Uh, I did this webinar for our members at Basecamp a few days ago, and it's before the, the down move today and yesterday. And uh, it's helped a lot of people offset a lot of the risks. And we've been talking about it in the trading rooms. It's helped people save a lot of money as this market has collapsed over the past few weeks. The fastest turn from a bull market into a bear market in history. Okay. So with that being said, I got a question for you. Um, how's your trading? Are you making money? Are you losing money? Are you breaking even? Right now, because of the way the markets are acting, most people are losing money. All right. And that's because most traders are, they don't understand how to trade. And what happens with a lot of people when markets start going crazy like this is they start seeing these wild volatility swings. They go, oh my goodness, I could be making so much money. And they start over trading. They start putting too much, too many trades on, trying to jump in and catch every move, or they start trying to pick a bottom. And that's not the way to do it. That's not the way that you want to behave. And it ends up causing them to lose money. And this is where you see a lot of people blow up their accounts. And that's not necessarily something that has to happen. There's awesome, there's awesome trading opportunities that show up in a bear market environment, especially with high volatility like this. Okay, so before we dive in here, let me introduce myself. For those of you not familiar with me, this is me, Thomas Wood, and I've been trading since I was about 13, 14 years old. I've already spent more time trading than most people, more time trading real money than most people will in a lifetime. Uh, the whole reason I got started in this industry and, and one of the th reasons I'm so passionate about helping other people learn how to trade is my father's who got me into this. And he said, look, Thomas, you don't want to be doing this backbreaking work that I'm doing. You own a construction company. He said, if you want to have the freedom to do the things you want to do and, and make the money you want to make and spend time with your family like you want to do with your family, one of the best ways to do that is by trading, All right? So he got me into it. But when he was first trying to learn how to trade himself, he ended up losing hundreds of thousands of dollars following these quote unquote gurus out there that in my opinion really had no business uh, teaching anybody how to trade. And I thought, you know what? That's not right. And I wanted to become the exception to the rule and really help people. Uh, learn how to do how to trade correctly and, and how to make money in the markets. So with that being said, uh, the only thing I've ever done in my professional career is trade for myself, trade for others, trade for a fund, manage a fund, and do trading education. Now here at Basecamp Trading, 
Uh, combined as partners, we have over 40 years experience in hedge funds and professional money management. It's what we do. We're a trading technology and education company. We have patented trading tools. We've been featured in Bloomberg, CNN Money, Barron's Money Show, Traders Expo. I've done consulting with multi-billion dollar funds as well as thousands of retail traders around the world. All right, now with that being said, our strategies work. All right, this is a broker statement from one of our funds in the past showing 4.8 million just about in gains in a single month, 7.6 million in gains on the year. This is another broker statement from an account I was trading personally with discretionary trades showing 30 some thousand in gains in a single day. Okay, just a regular retail account. So with that being said, what are you gonna to learn today? Because like I said, I, I wanna make sure you learn something. I'm doing this because I wanna help people. So we're gonna talk about defining trend and understanding market environment. We're gonna talk about how you determine bull and bear markets other than just the thing that everybody says, which is okay, you have a 20% decline, you're in a bear market. That's not the way to look at it, in my opinion. We're gonna talk, talk about when to start building positions in a bear market. Uh, because sell-offs like this create great opportunity but most traders don't understand when to start putting money in and they end up taking more losses than they need to. Now we're going to talk about both whether you're a cash heavy person. I mean, you have a lot of cash excess capital you can start putting into the market. Or if you're the person that's just sitting on the sidelines going, okay, I just need to know when to put the money in and then never touch it for long-term investing, not trading. Okay. We're also going to talk about hedging, how you can hedge using futures, for example. Everybody talks about hedging using options. In my opinion, that's much more complex than what it needs to be. Futures are a lot simpler. Uh, you don't have anything like time decay or anything that affects an option. You don't have the premium. You can just buy or sell a futures contract to offset positions based on notional value. And I'll discuss how we determine notional value and how we determine how to offset those positions. Uh, then we'll talk about what kind of markets thrive in the current downturn. So what types of opportunities are there and what types of things we want to avoid uh, in this current environment, specifically impacted by coronavirus. And hopefully this will help you learn how to start thinking about the underlying causes of market moves. So it will help you with understanding long-term how to handle the next bear market or how to handle the bull market and, and when things will start to turn around, okay? Have you been using the impulse trade method there? Yeah. One of the traders in the trading room was up like 150 grand or something over the past couple of days using impulse trades. It's funny you asked that, but we're not talking about impulse trading right now. All right. So with that being said, we're going to cover all that. Hopefully it's going to help you. Uh, at the end of the webinar today, if you want to come and check out Basecamp Trading and come to the trading rooms where we talk about this stuff live as it's happening, uh, I'll show you how you can sign up for seven bucks. It's really cheap. We're making it uh, really readily available. And so you can get a lot more training on price action, understanding trends and, and how markets move. Okay. But with that being said, let's dive in here uh, with the first section, uh, which is uptrends, downtrends, bull and bear markets. All right. How do we determine them? So one of the first things you need to understand here is when we're looking at a, a bull or a bear market, like I said, I personally do not follow the, the traditional sense of, okay, a bull market is when stocks are climbing and a bear market is when we have a 20% decline, right? What I do to, what I do is I look at trends. I look at the market trend because normally, now this is kind of a black swan event, but normally you don't see a market just fall straight through the floor. Even this one, this one didn't do that either. If you look at your dailies and your 240s, the market actually did this. It came down, bounced down, we just bounced, and we just accelerated down again the past couple of days from the most recent lower high, all right? So the first thing you need to understand is how to determine a trend, all right? In order to determine a trend, we look at pivot points, not just one price bar in relation to the next. We look at major turning points in the market. So all a pivot point is, is it's a price level that the market went up to and turned and came back down from. Now, I know this might sound uh, repetitive for, so, for those of you that have been in a naked trading webinar before. I promise you this is the only part that's the same. The rest of it's going to be talking about specific uh, setups and stuff that occur in a bear market. All right, so a pivot point is just a turning point where we have a pivot high or a pivot low. Market's gone to that level and bounced off of it. All right, it is not just one price bar in relation to the next. Okay, so keep that in mind. Again, pivot points 
it's any level that the market has gone up to and then pulled back from. When we're looking at pivots, we normally want to see several price bars leading up to and then several price bars leading away from the high or the low of the pivot. All right. So how do we define a trend? If you understand what pivots are, this is how we de define a trend. So again, pivots are just the swing highs and lows, but we're going to skip that here. So an uptrend, or I consider a bull market, is when we are going higher high and higher low pivots. All right. A downtrend is when we are going lower high and lower low pivots. Okay. Currently, we're going lower high and lower low pivots pretty substantially. Uh, and then everything else is considered consolidation slash reversal. Okay. Now, when we're talking about putting on a hedge, when we're talking about when do we want to turn on hedges, when do we want to kind of press pause on the market movement on our on our portfolio, we normally start looking at pressing pause and hedging when a market goes into consolidation slash reversal. So as soon as that uptrend stops, so if we're going higher high and higher low pivots like this, we come back down and we break the previous pivot low, time to put on a hedge. Now, again, when we're putting on a hedge, we're not trying to make a killer killing. We're not trying to make a ton of money. All we're trying to do is offset potential losses. OK, or at least decrease the losses. If the market as a whole goes down, uh, well, 25 percent or so, like we we're seeing now, and we offset in part of our position. And instead of being down 25 percent, our portfolio is only down five or 10 or 7 percent. We did a good job. Our hedge worked. OK, it's just trying to preserve capital. If the market fails to sell off and instead climbs back up, then we just take the hedge off. We took a pause. We basically paused the profits on our uh, portfolio and we missed out on a little bit of the gains. That's okay. All right. It's all about protection and smoothing out that equity curve. So when we look at an uptrend, and this is the SPX here on a weekly basis. Now, when we're doing analysis for bull and bear markets, when we're doing analysis for trends, and I just took this the other day, by the way, we are way down here right now. Okay, what we what do we look for? Longer time frame charts, dailies and weeklies are where we're determining trends. So when we look at this, you can see we really well defined higher high, higher low uptrend on the way up, right? Until this point where we put in a lower high. So then you go hedged. Then we start to climb back up. Came in, you would have gone hedged again. We go right back to a bull market, and we've been in that for a while here, all the way up until a few weeks ago when we broke through this previous pivot low. Now, there was also a bearish divergence up here. And if you're a member at Basecamp, literally the Friday of that week, we said we're bearish the stock market because of a divergence we expect to be lower this week or the following week. That being said, <laughs> didn't expect it to be this low. <laughs> Not gonna sit here and try to claim that I knew we were gonna go through the floor like this. I did expect us to pull back, nowhere near this much though. All right, but we, established hedges on long-term trades right here at this point as soon as we broke through the previous pivot low so again we're not trying to time the top we're not trying to time the bottom okay all we're trying to do is press pause and preserve capital when the market starts acting abnormally so when we look at this this is uh the 2008 bear market now everybody thinks about oh my goodness the market just fell through the floor yeah we had a really bad down move in 2008 and yeah, we had a really bad down move this year or this month. Um, that being said, this is kind of an anomaly. Normally, if you go back in history and look at all the bear markets we've had, it normally trends down on a weekly basis. We start going lower, high and lower, low pivots, and we continue to do that all the way down until what happens? We change trend and then we start going back up higher, high and higher, low pivots. But if you understand how a trend works, you understand how to identify trends we know we want to be hedged through this entire period because we would have been establishing hedges way up here so you're hedged this entire thing until we change back to an uptrend over here and then we're getting out of our hedge so again all we're doing is offsetting much of the losses that we otherwise would have experienced in our long-term portfolios now, if you're like me, remember at the beginning, I said you only trade with risk capital. I personally only trade with about 20 to 25% of my portfolio. The rest of it, I have diversified between money managers, between systems, uh, between real estate, between uh, long-term positions. All right, so I'm, I'm very big on diversification, which that's why over this down move, I'm only down 
total portfolio wise, maybe 5% because uh, trading has been really good here recently. Long-term trade, long-term positions, obviously getting crushed. Um, real estate's just cash flowing as usual. But my point though is if you understand when to hit pause, if you understand when to hedge, your long-term portfolios won't get hit nearly as much. And that's one of the things if you're in a trading room that we talked about the very first week we started selling off, uh, we were offsetting longs using shorts in futures market. Okay. That's a spread cross. That's a different thing. So when do we start building long-term positions? So again, we, we establish hedges when our trend goes from uptrend to consolidation slash reversal. As soon as we break through a previous pivot low. All right. When do we start building long-term positions? And one thing, so there, there's two different ways of looking at this. All right. It depends on if you're cash heavy or if you're just waiting on the sidelines and want to get in once the market actually turns. Because one thing everybody says is, I'm going to pick the bottom. I'll wait until it bottoms and then I'm going to jump in. Well, the problem is when the market actually turns, most traders get caught in so many false rallies because they get in too early. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. But the first thing that we look for, if we're waiting on the sidelines to determine that a bear market's over, is the trend to change. Okay, again, don't try to pick the bottom. Now, if you are cash heavy, this goes, we trade a little bit differently. Uh, if you're cash heavy, if you have a large cash position that you can start putting into the market, what we do is every week or so, we will add a certain percentage. Let's say we have $100,000 in cash that we wanna put into the market. Every week we're down, we'll add one, $2,000 to it. Okay, and we just average in. And the further down we go, so we might start off with adding $1,000 at a time. The further that market declines, we'll increase it. So every 10% it declines, we'll increase the amount of cash we're adding. So we might start off going $1,000 per week, we're down 10%, then we go 2,000 per week. We're down 20%, we go 3,000 per week. So that's just averaging into a position. And again, this is not for trading. All right. This is not for leverage. This is a cash position. This is for long-term holding. So do not confuse this with me telling you to go to trade Martingale or something, because I think that's a terrible idea. This is long-term positions. We're just dollar cost averaging in to a bear market. And we expect it to turn red. We expect to lose money on these trades short-term. So we're just building positions as it gets further and further down. And then 10 years from now, we'll look back and we'll say, man, we had a great entry into this. All right. This is not, again, for going into a futures market and going, I'm going to buy S&P. I'm going to add another S&P. I'm going to add another S&P because something like this will happen. You'll wipe out your entire account in a day. Okay. So with that being said, uh, do not try to pick the bottom if you're waiting for it to turn. This is what everybody says. I want to pick the, as soon as it starts going back up, they see the market come down like this. They see us have one or two good up weeks and they go, yeah, the market's bottoming and they'll buy here and the market will just turn and go straight back down. So do not pick the bottom unless you're very cash heavy and you're averaging on the way down. What we want to wait for is that trend to change. So again, we might not get in anywhere near the bottom of the market, but we're going to wait for it to come down like this and then start going back up. The other thing to remember is that markets rarely have a V top or a V bottom. Okay, it's very, very rare for a market to go straight down to straight back up. So why is this important? Why am I telling you this? Because we don't want to be that person that gets caught when it goes down right back up. You start buying here. It goes down again. You get stopped out here and then it goes back up long term. All right. Most of the time when a market turns either from highs and turns lower or from lows and turns higher, most of the time the market We'll try to revisit the lows and then turn and go higher, or it will try to revisit the highs, fail, and turn and go lower. All right. So here's an example. Uh, this is the 2000, uh, 2008 bear market. Once again, we're coming down, lower highs and lower lows. We trend all the way down here, go down for the lows. One last time here, we fail and then we go higher. So where are we buying? Right over here when we start the uptrend. Again, You'll notice that's way off the lows, but that's okay. Because what we didn't do is get caught buying here or get caught buying here or get caught buying here before the market flushes and knocks out all the retail traders. And that's where most people lose a ton of money trying to buy that V bottom. Okay, wait for the trend to change. Once it changes, then we can start building our positions longer term again.
All right, and, and when we do this, instead of going in like $1,000 at a time, if you had that $100,000 sitting on the side, we'd go in uh, 20,000, 30,000, and that would start our anchor trade. And then we'd look to add $10,000 at a time every single time we have a dip. All right. Now, once again, for the, so first thing, let me recap. First thing, don't buy on the way down. Don't try to pick the bottom. Wait until the trend changes. Be patient. I know with the volatility and we're seeing markets falling through the floor, it's very, very tempting just to start putting money in it. Don't do that unless you're very cash heavy and you're trying to average in. All right. If you're not very cash heavy, you're not trying to average in, then you just wait, sit on the sidelines. Once the trend changes, then we look to get in. The second thing to remember here is that markets rarely have V bottoms and tops, like I said a minute ago. Normally what happens is we will try to revisit the low or the high with weakening momentum and then fail and run the opposite direction. Okay, because we know this, do not try to buy on V bottoms. And that being said, I know I'm telling you guys this and there's going to be a whole bunch of people that go and do it anyway. All right. So with that being said, when you look back here, you can see we went down, up, down, revisited the lows, and then climbed. Here, down, up, down, revisited the lows, and then climbed. This case, we did have a V bottom, but if you actually look on a weekly basis, we had a V bottom, but if you look at the dailies, it actually went like this. Failed and went back up. At the highs, we went up, down, up. Momentum had divergence. This is why we were bearish that week. And then through the floor, we went. Okay, so normally momentum starts shifting. There's signs and, and we fail to rally or fail to follow through. And that's when we get a turn. Okay, here's another example. This is the 2000 bear market. And again, I'm just using the SPX, which is the cash S&P. All right, this is the 2000 bear market. How did this play out? Trending down. And I want you to notice the similarities here. We had one false move up, but we would not have gotten caught here. Why? because we didn't change to an uptrend. We had a higher low, but we did not have a higher high. Continue with our downtrend, fail to revisit the lows over here, and boom, we start climbing, and that's where our long entries are, because that's where our uptrend starts, because we put in the higher low pivot, we break to the higher high pivot. Does that make sense? And again, the thing I want you to notice about this is it doesn't just reverse on a dime. Now, that being said, I have a feeling that the recovery from this sell-off is going to be much faster than what we typically see for a bear market recovery. And I think this bear market is going to be much shorter in duration than what we typically see for a bear market. Now, why is that? If you look at all the other bear markets that we, we've had in recent history, um, why did they move down? There were underlying economic conditions there are underlying economic conditions that led to that bear market. This is the economy's, the global economy is pretty strong. Um, we were due for a bear market. So it's not surprising that we're in a bear market. Uh, it is surprising the, the speed at which we sold off, but this is driven by an event. And that event is the coronavirus, COVID-19 and the impact. What, what's really pushing this lower is it's not that people are scared of getting sick. It's think about the economic impact that's trickling through from millions of people not being able to work. Okay, from supply chains that are being disrupted, from manufacturing that's being disrupted. All right, there's entire industries that are huge for the global economy, like tourism, like uh, cruises, like um, your manufacturing, because we, we are very reliant upon uh, international shipping and manufacturing etc that are being killed airlines and things that are being killed right now because of the coronavirus and people are scared to go go places okay that's what's hurting the economy most and we haven't even seen the economic impact yet because we haven't gotten the reports from earnings or anything else yet this is just anticipation of bad does that make sense so it, it's anticipating that this is going to be really bad and i have a feeling it's not going to be as bad as we expected if that's the case, I would expect the recovery to be much faster. All right. 
But my point though is it doesn't just stop in reverse. It normally will fail and trend will change. And that's when we start getting in these longer term positions. Okay, so with that being said, any questions before we talk about hedging long-term trades, hedging portfolios? And we're, we're going to dive into a little bit about understanding notional values and, and how we can use uh, stocks to do that or use futures to do that. Okay, so let's keep on pushing on here. So uh, we have options to hedge ourselves, no pun intended. You can use options to do it. Uh, you can also use futures. I personally prefer futures, uh, especially in the in the modern day where people are mainly invested in mutual funds and index funds where they're they're just matching the index. By the way, we just got a news announcement that said federal government says coronavirus relief package delayed until next week. Um, so where most people have broad market exposure in our long-term portfolios, one of the easiest ways to hedge this is by trading futures. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on what futures are, but we can very easily, if you want to learn what they are, just Google what futures contracts are. Um, we can very easily get turn on and turn off hedges. We can get long or short. All we have to do is click buy or sell on the correct contract month and it'll offset a position, but you need to understand how big of a position to trade in order to do this. And we also don't have to pay things like premium, like options premium. We don't have to pay, we don't have time decay, et cetera. They're going to hurt an options trade. Okay. We don't have to sit there and go, okay, well, we have 500 contracts in this market. So we'll go put five puts on, uh, and we have a thousand contracts in that market. So we'll go put 10 puts on that kind of thing. It's very easy because we can just, we can just go sell an index like the S&P 500 or the Dow or the Russell or the NASDAQ based on whatever our mo we're most exposed to and calculate the number of contracts to trade based on notional value. So again, we're going to look at notional value, which for those of you not familiar with what that term is, notional value just means the cash value of the underlying, okay, in order to offset our portfolio position. So how do we calculate notional value? Because most traders don't understand how to do this. It's pretty simple. It's just the cash value of the underlying contract, and we get it by multiplying the current price of that futures contract by the big point value. Okay. So, for example, if we were trading the S&P or the E-mini S&P, the ES, okay, and this is the S&P, it mirrors the S&P 500 index, all right, we would trade, uh, if the, if the S&P price was trading at 27.50, we would multiply that by 50 points or by 50 because that's the big point value of a, that's the dollar amount you would make or lose on a one point move if you're in one e-mini contract. And that gives us a notional value of 137,500. Now, in order to trade the S&P, I mean, margins have now increased drastically, uh, but normally your margin is like six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 in order to control a $137,500 position. Okay, so you can use a lot of leverage here, which makes it really easy to have a, a smaller account on the side. It's a futures account to hedge positions. So again, we would take the current price times the big point value, and that gives us the notional value or the cash value of a single contract. So let's take this one step further. Uh, for those of you that don't know what the notional values are or what those big point values are for the different uh, index futures, Here's how you multiply them. This is your multipliers. So the, to get the notional value of one Dow contract, we take the current price of the Dow, multiply it by five points. Now, one of the great things here is for those of you that don't have larger portfolios or you want to be even more precise, we can trade the micros now because now there's micro futures and it's one tenth the size. So if we're going to trade the micro Dow, we'd multiply the current price of the Dow times 50 cents. That would give us the notional value. S&P is $50, current price times $50 for the mini and current price times $5 for the micro. NASDAQ is current price times $20, or micro NASDAQ is current price times two. Russell is current price times $20, or current price times two for the micro. And again, the notional value, the cash value of one contract is just price times that multiplier. Okay, take a screenshot now if you wanna know what those are. All right, 
So let's take a hypothetical port portfolio of a million dollars. Let's say we have a million dollar retirement portfolio that has a broad market exposure. It's in a lot of different index funds and things. We could, if we wanted to offset that position, so we don't want to, we don't need to close that trade. We don't need to sell because that doesn't help anything. We just ride it out. But we do want to hedge ourselves so we don't sit there and have a 25% drawdown in our portfolio. All we got to do is sell seven E mini SP futures contracts according to the notional value. And that would offset the position. It would be like having a short in the SP 500 worth $962,500. So we're offsetting 96.25% of our million dollar portfolio. Does that make sense? Let's say you had a $100,000 portfolio. How do we do that? Instead of trading seven E-minis, we trade seven micro minis because it's one tenth the size. And then we'd have a $96,250 offset of our $100,000 portfolio. We got a $2 million portfolio, just increased number of contracts. All right, does that make sense? So while our portfolio, our long-term positions might be losing money, what we've essentially done is we press pause. We said, whoa, 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 hold up. I don't want to lose any more money. I'm willing to give up potentially making more money. I just want to hit pause until this is all worked out. And we're trying to just offset those losses. So we'll be losing money in our long-term portfolio, but we'll be making money in the short in the S&P. All right. And if you wanted to go a little bit more weighted towards the short side, instead of trading seven, you might trade eight E-minis and you'd have a little over a million dollars net short in the S&P. And the margin for that, I mean, you could do this with a much smaller, like a fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 account. Okay. Any questions about that? And again, one of the great things about futures contracts is we don't have to worry about all the Greeks and stuff that you do with options. They're, they're in my opinion, like the one of the simplest ways to trade. You just got to be long if they're going up or short if they're going down. Okay. So let's keep moving on here and we'll talk a little bit about what kind of markets will outperform and, and kind of what our expectations are with the current market environment, with, with what's impacting and causing this bear market. Again, you said that's great until the S&P moves up 50 points the next day. It doesn't matter. We're not trying to make money. We're just trying to hit pause on our long-term portfolio. This is not about trading. This is about hedging. Your long-term portfolio is a million dollars net long with broad market exposure. So if the S&P rallies 50 points the next day, yeah, you're going to lose money on your, in your short uh, with the futures, but you're going to make money in your long-term portfolio. Again, we're not trying to trade and make money with this. We're trying to offset losses, period. Make sense? We're not trying to trade this. This is not trying to go make a million dollars trading. We're trying to hedge our long-term portfolios so you don't sit there and watch all of your money disappear. Not all of it, but 25% or 30% of it disappear. So what kind of markets are outperforming with coronavirus? Which ones are underperforming? Which ones are hedged? So when we look at, first off, we're going to look at what markets are negatively impacted from the coronavirus. All right. Some of the big ones are manufacturing. Boeing. I mean, Boeing's getting absolutely crushed. Now they had other problems as well, but this is just like the icing on the cake that's caused Boeing to fall through the floor. Uh, things like Caterpillar are getting hit hard. Airlines are getting crushed because nobody wants to fly right now because everybody's afraid of it. So these are, these are all, again, markets, stocks that are going to get hit, take the worst, the brunt of the impact. Okay. Hotels. This is why we were selling. If you were in the trading room, we were buying puts in Hilton last week. They played out beautifully. Cruise lines, uh, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, et cetera, they're getting killed because nobody wants to go on a cruise. I mean, I literally, I canceled a cruise I was supposed to be on in May, I'm taking $3,000 or $4,000 loss on it. But yeah, story for a different time. <laughs> Energy, 
And there's also other things happening right now. We have Russia and uh, the Saudis are getting into a price war with oil and they're just flooding the market with oil and that's hurting energy even more. But energy markets, Exxon, Chevron, et cetera, they're getting absolutely crushed as well. Okay. The second thing we look at is, well, which markets are going to be minimally impacted? So the first one, we might want to minimize those positions. Ones that are more safer to hold, in my opinion, meaning they're not going to be as negatively impacted. Now, remember, a rising tide carries all ships. And when the stock market falls to the floor, most things go down. All right, so they're still going to get hit, but they're not going to get hit nearly as bad as the broad market as a lot of the other industries. So some that are going to be minimally impacted are things like online services, Zoom meetings, for example, Netflix. Uh, these are companies where their demand is actually going to go up due to people staying at home, being quarantined at home. The next thing is healthcare. Uh, so things like AstraZeneca, VHT, uh, VHT is a, a, a healthcare ETF, and these are holdings that I have right now that I'm still holding on to because of this. I, I liquidated, for example, like my Exxon positions, um, downsized a lot of my other longer term holds in those negatively impacted markets, but I'm holding on to things like my VHT position, my AstraZeneca position, uh, healthcare, because demand is going to actually go up for their products. So they're not going to see as big of a negative impact from this. Tech, things like Adobe, AMD, et cetera. Now they're getting hit again. I'm not saying these markets are not going to go down. They have potential to go down. They probably are going to go down and they, I mean, they are going down because again, as the broad market sells off, everything gets pulled down with it. It's just look at, for example, Boeing, which is down nearly 70% versus something like Netflix, which might be down 15%. Okay. And then infrastructure, things like power companies. These are all things where their demand is not going to change and it actually may increase, which should help make them minimally impacted from coronavirus, things like Duke Energy. Okay, because again, people are getting quarantined at home, which means more power is going to be used, et cetera. So they're, they're, they're not, their profitability is not getting impacted nearly as much, is my point. All right, and then the third category is what industries are positively impacted from the coronavirus? And this is where you actually start making money. These are the ones that are actually gonna go up when something like this happens. Now, again, if you've been at Basecamp, if you've been in the trade room with me, you know we've had some really great trades like uh, APT, uh, Lakeland Industries, et cetera, that have gone up several hundred percent. Uh, things like dust, we just established a dust position with calls and shares. Uh, the other day and this was in this was a long and dust and it's gone up a hundred percent in like three days okay so there's certain markets that will thrive in a time like this so what are they biotech is a big one uh, look at companies that are making working on cures for example um gilead sciences a uh, guild's working on a vaccine now the impact of guild may not be as big because it would be terrible PR for them if they came in and tried to give out, hey, we have a vaccine and it costs hundred grand. So they may not make as much money as they otherwise would with uh, some long-term healthcare stuff. But that being said, look at how guilds reacted with the whole market sell-off. They're still up as a whole. Okay, specific manufacturing, i.e. Lakeland Industries, L-A-K-E. This is one we bought two or three weeks ago right as the market started to collapse due to coronavirus, when, that, when we had that first big down day, I think it was Tuesday, we were buying Lake, okay? And it, it played out beautifully. I mean, we jumped several hundred percent. And you can go back and you look, uh, so why is Lakeland Industries doing so well? Well, they make um, biohazard suits. They make the, the suits that doctors wear and, and that help keep out coronavirus, <laughs> okay? The demand for their products has gone absolutely haywire. All right, things like 3M, for example. 3M, now, they have they have more exposure. They're not as specific as something like Lakeland, but they make, for example, face masks, and demand for 3M has just gone 
for their face masks has gone through the roof. They can't even meet the demand. They don't have enough supply to meet it, which is going to help their sales and help minimize the impact they're going to see from this broad market sell-off. Okay. Uh, again, Lakeland is L-A-K-E. Dust is another one we were in, uh, and people are still in it right now. I went flat yesterday. Um, other ones are APT, Alpha Pro Tech. There's a lot of – you got to go look for markets. You want to find – Companies that have a very specific product that they specialize in, all right? They do, and, and you want to find those products that are going to have demand just go through the roof, and you'll see their stock jump like crazy. Okay, when I say jump like crazy, I mean literally some of the ones, I forgot what it was. There was one that were, I think it was IBIO or INO. We were up, it was like an 1,100% move over a, a week or two. Okay, so there's there's other markets you can make money in. And then safe haven markets. Things like gold, silver, bonds. Uh, now, that being said, uh, if you were in a trade room with us, as soon as they made the announcement of the emergency rate cut last Tuesday, we bought calls in um, TLT. And we sold them a few days later for uh, anywhere from 400 to 1,000% profit. So there's opportunities if you know what to look for and you know what you're you're watching for. Now, gold, I just said safe haven markets. Gold's traditionally a safe haven. However, what's happening here? Why was dust such a good play? Okay, D-U-S-T is the, is the ticker if you want to know what dust is. It's an inverse, it's a 3X inverse gold miners ETF. All right, so it, now I want you to pay attention to something here. It's not a gold inverse gold ETF, it's a gold miners ETF. So what does that mean? Well, when the broad market is selling off, Gold miners are getting crushed because most stocks are, are going to sell off. All right. However, what have we seen happening here with gold recently? And we, and we established this position earlier this week, uh, two days ago, Tuesday. We established, well, actually, I got in my longs in post-market, aftermarket trading um, Monday night and bought calls Tuesday morning. And again, we liquidated them yesterday and today. So... If it's an inverse ETF, one thing we have seen that we haven't seen happen here with the market sell-off, gold has not been jumping like it should have, which tells us that people are not hedging their bets with gold. And, when, and not only that, we've seen things like platinum and silver actually fall through the floor, which are also typically safe haven markets. So we're going, okay, well, if gold's not rallying and stocks are selling off, then gold miners should be selling off as well because they're not being held up by gold prices. And then best case scenario is what happened today where we had gold sell off, which if you were in the trading room again, we bought GLD puts yesterday. Uh, gold sold off like crazy today. And the stock market sold off like crazy today. And dust was up something like 30 some odd percent today alone. Okay. So, there's a lot of different if, if you think about what markets are positively and negatively impacted you've got to kind of read between the lines there's a lot of opportunities that are created from a market like this okay now that being said go back and, and especially with things like lakeland where i was talking about specific manufacturing keep in mind they're going to look something like this they'll go straight up as everything goes crazy and then as soon as the the event the coronavirus is over, they'll go straight back down. Go look at Lakeland, for example, with the Ebola outbreak and H1N1. Did the exact same thing. Go straight up. Everybody bought it. Their product went through the roof and then it went straight back down again. Okay, and the same things happened here. Okay. Make sense? So who learned something? Hopefully this has helped you learn a little bit more about how to protect yourself in a bear market, how to know when to build positions. Uh, my largest position right now, by the way, is cash. I'm just waiting. All right, if you want to know where my thoughts are, I still think we have more potential downside here. I'm waiting. I'm not going to try to pick a bottom. My largest holding right now is cash. And I'm just sitting on the sidelines until it's time to start putting money in. All right. Now, with that being said, for those of you that want to come try out Basecamp, again, hopefully you learned something. I always want to make sure you learn something. If you want to come try out Basecamp, 
Uh, you can come test out the entire membership experience. It's normally $97 a month. It's only $7 to come try it out today for the for an entire month. Uh, just go to bctnow.com forward slash try. If you need help, uh, you can send an email to support at basecamptrading.com or call us at 919-935-0010. bctnow.com forward slash try. And I'll show you what you're going to want to do after that. Any suggestions on going to cash now? Mm. So first off, I got to say, I'm not an RIA, so I cannot give you specific trade advice and say you should or shouldn't do anything. All right. Um, that being said, if it was me and I was still holding on to all my positions, I wouldn't be liquidating now. Uh, once, I mean, we're already down 25%. All you're going to do is realize those losses, and more often than not, what happens is by the time everybody is finally, they hold out as long as they possibly can, and they go, okay, I'm done. And as soon as that happens, it turns around and goes back up. Okay, it's going to take you for everything you can, get you out of it, and then you're going to don't turn around. So bctnow.com, by the way, forward slash try brings you here. Just click that get started for nice or for $7. You can get signed up. It's 97 bucks a month if you want to try it out. Once you have, or it's 97 bucks a month if you want to stay a member. Let me show you here. Once you sign up, the very first thing you're going to want to do is take Naked Trading Mastery. All right, and it's in there. We include it in the trial so that you can learn more. If nothing else, if you don't even stay a member, it's worth the $7 just for this workshop. We used to sell it for 500 bucks all day long. So once you sign up, go to your members area and click on the access members area. And right here, this top middle thing, Naked Trading Mastery, click that. You can go through and it's broken down into different segments. It'll teach you all about price action and understanding trends and understanding when trades should take place. It'll help you drastically with understanding when this is going to turn. Okay. Now, with that being said, you can also come through and, and watch the daily videos and the weekly outlooks. Uh, every Friday, we do the weekly outlook. Every end of day, we do the daily video. Um, with that being said, I'll talk about when the longer term trend is changing in those videos. Okay, so I'll be telling all our members, hey, it's starting to turn now. We're looking for longer term moves up. Uh, I've been saying the past several weeks, we're still looking for more downside. All right. No, you cannot get a different workshop than Naked Trading Mastery. No. Again, it's seven bucks. So. Uh, why not trade to the downside? We do trade to the downside. But today was about hedging and protecting your assets during a bear market. Well, we've been trading to the downside a whole lot. Uh, we had spy puts a while ago. We had spy calls on the bounce, spy puts, and they've been playing out really well. If you want to follow up trading in a really small account, to show people what you can do in a market environment like this, even if you're trading a smaller account. I started a $700 account, um, I guess it's two weeks ago now. And it's up to 2,500 so far. So it's doing pretty good. And those are trades. Those are actual trades. Now it's more difficult because I keep forgetting I'm on a small account and can't do day trades. I keep getting pattern day trader warnings. Um, so I keep getting stuck in positions I wanted to close at the end of the day. But it's still doing really well. I, if you want to follow that account, just go look up at Trades with Tom on Instagram. I'm posting it there, posting screenshots of the account every day. Uh, so Thomas, if you're mostly holding cash now, what would you need to see to decide to reinvest in the markets or other assets? So I have a large cash, cash position, like I said before. So one of the things I'm doing is uh, before the last bounce, I was averaging in. On the last bounce, I covered. Um, now I'm, I added a position today. I uh, went long just in um, broad market index. And I will add some more as we continue to sell off. A little bit of a, at a time, about half of my portfolio or half of my cash position, I'll average in. And then once it turns, once the trend changes, like I talked about earlier, when we stop going lower highs and lower lows like this, and our weeklies turn and start going back higher highs and higher lows, I'll add the second half of my portfolio. So I'll be averaging in on the way down here with half of my cash and then buying the rest of the cash over here, which should bring my average entry somewhere around this area. Are day trading margins, margins increased now? Heck yeah, they're increased right now. 
Can you get the recording of this webinar? Yeah, uh, shoot a message to support. But again, I just did the same webinar for all of our members uh, earlier this week. So hopefully this helped everybody. Again, be patient. Don't let an itchy trigger finger make you lose a bunch of money just because you keep buying. Uh, Jesse Livermore, who's one of the greatest traders of all time, is one of the guys is known for making and losing a fortune multiple times. <laughs> one of his sayings is, uh, don't buy a stock just because it's down off of its highs. Right? Make sure you have reason for what you're doing. Make sure you have logic behind it. Make sure you're following your rules. Don't let emotions take over in a time like this and make you make and have you make bad decisions. All right. But all right, everybody, that's going to be it for today. I look forward to seeing you in the trade room tomorrow morning. After those of you that sign up, you'll have access to the room in the morning. Uh, it is, again, bctnow.com forward slash try. Again, Jim, it just depends on how you want to do it. That's why I said there's two different options. If you're cash heavy, you can average in. Uh, that'll get you a little bit better of an average entry. Uh, if you are not cash heavy, you can wait. Or if you're more conservative, you can wait until the trend changes and then look to enter over here. Just depends. Like I said, if you're averaging in, you're going to see red. You're going to, you just got to go, okay, I understand it's red. I understand it's bearish. I expect to lose money on my averaging in. 10 years from now, though, I'll have a great entry. So you got to think with the future in mind, not with what's happening right now in mind. All right. And I, I still wouldn't be surprised to see more downside. I was expecting between a 25 and 35% decline on this sell-off. So far, we're right at the lower end of that. So I think we could go down another 10%. <laughs> and with current market environment, that could be tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Normally, a bear market wipes out about 55 or so percent. So keep that in mind. So what is, what's the difference between the three trading rooms? So I run a room from 8 a.m. until noon. Uh, that's specifically futures, primarily futures focused, but I also, again, talk about some options trades I'm taking, stock trades I'm taking, uh, things like that, but it's primarily futures based. Uh, Gary Edwards runs the room from noon until 4 p.m., so you got the entire U.S. session covered, and he does the same thing as me, primarily futures, but he also talks about stocks and options. And then we have Dave Aquino, who is a great expert options trader. He runs the options trading room from 9 a.m. Eastern until 1 p.m. Eastern. All right, but that is it for today, everybody. Be careful, trade safe, and until next time, happy trading.